So a neural circuit is a collection of neurons that do a particular job. Yeah? So the brain is made up of, in the human case, 100 billion neurons or so, and each of those neurons connects to other neurons, so, and it fires action potentials to communicate information. For, say, the sensory cortex, say visual cortex or auditory cortex, we know that these circuits are there to deal with sensory information coming in. So for visual cortex, they're dealing with particular edges in the world or particular orientations of edges or movements. And for auditory cortex, they're dealing with particular frequencies of sounds or particular collections of frequencies of sounds. Neural circuits and computer circuits share a number of similarities in the way they operate, but they're quite different in how they actually do those operations. Computer circuits compute using binary logic. Everything communicated in computer is based on zeros and ones. And it's long we recognize that brains work in very much the same way. So neurons fire exact potentials, so-called spikes, I was recognized a long time ago, in the 40s, that these spikes occur as an all or none event. So either neuron emits a spike or it doesn't. So this is a binary code. Every spike is a one, every absence of a spike is a zero. And indeed, the original work proposing this back in the 40s was the foundation for modern computer design. John von Neumann, who designed the original digital computer architecture, used this idea of neurons being binary to design the computer. So this the operation level is kind of similar. They have this binary underlying operation when they're in their computations. And indeed, the fact that we talk about neurons computing means that we automatically think about them like a computer. But uh, how they physically realize this is quite different. So computers are made out of uh, gates, transistor gates, that flip zero and ones, and have that's the processor, and they have a memory which is completely separate, which they read and write information to and from. Whereas in neural circuits, these things are all mixed together. The neurons fire, this is the transmission of activity in a binary fashion, but the connections between the neurons store the memories, at least in short term. It's the strengths of the connection between neurons that store memories. So these two things are mixed together. So computers and brains both use algorithms. An algorithm is, simply put, just a sequence of steps that define how to do a particular operation. Any algorithm essentially is a recipe for taking some inputs, doing something to it, and getting some output. We often think about neurons and neural circuits implementing algorithms because we can describe the uh, effects they have on behavior from an algorithmic perspective. We can say these inputs have come in, the brain has clearly done a sequence of steps to produce this output. So how is it we actually uh, convert sensory information coming into our brains into a motor action? Well when we tend to perform um, everyday actions it seems very effortless to us. We don't really think about walking or um, reaching for a cup for instance or even driving yet actually there's a set of complicated processes going on and you can get a bit of an idea when you think about toddlers trying to pick up an object for the first time or walk actually uh, they take many attempts to uh, actually perform the action correctly uh, and they take many, many years, uh, months or years, to actually get, reach um, adult levels of proficiency. So you can see how complicated it is from looking at toddlers. So there are a number of different ideas about how we um, make movements, and uh, some of them do have uh, computational principles within them. For example, the idea of a, a motor program, in that we have motor programs within the brain that we call up to make an action. Similarly, we've got um, the, the idea that we use uh, feedback loops, such as vision, to um, correct when we make an action. So that's a closed loop system. However, the brain doesn't just use feedback systems. It is also very good at uh, predicting uh, and using a simulation. Uh, so predicting the consequences of our actions. If we only relied on visual feedback, we would have very slow jerky movements. And that's because, relatively speaking, vision takes quite a long time to get back to the brain to tell it whether the motor program is working or not. Whereas if we predict um, the consequences of our actions, even before we perform them, the brain can then work out, is this the correct action to perform? And, uh, and then correct it if it's not the case. And that's even before we start moving. If we give a uh, precise example um, of how it is you actually would reach to pick up a cup. 
So the information, the visual information about the cup comes into our brains and we also have information about where our arm is positioned in space. So that's called proprioception or our felt position of our limb in space. And the brain combines that information and creates a motor program or a sort of plan of how it's going to perform that action. It then executes that action by sending commands to our arm to try and pick up that cup. Uh, but it also receives visual feedback. So as we're performing the action, the, the brain receives visual feedback about how well we're actually moving towards that cup. And if it looks like we're not actually performing it in the correct manner, the brain can then detect that and uh, make a corrective movement. Now over time, and repeatedly performing these actions, our brain builds up um, models of how it is we should perform those actions. And so um, after many attempts, we become very proficient and that the brain can just call up these models and uh, we don't actually think too much when we perform the actions. In a sense, neural circuits just are our behaviour. So there's a long-standing uh, dogma in the field, this thing called the neuron doctrine, which says that the activity in the brain just is everything that we sense and perceive and all the actions that we take. So the firing of neurons is how the brain communicates both the information coming in from the world and outside to perform actions in the world. So there is nothing to colour or seeing movement or seeing lines or hearing sounds or smelling things or walking or lifting or playing tennis or driving in a car other than the activity in the brain that drives that. So there's particular circuits that are involved for these different jobs but combined they produce this complete experience of behaviour. Indeed there's this view that the reason the brain evolved at all was purely to, to control behaviour in an adaptive way, to make sure that the behaviour was always suited to the current circumstances so that you're going to survive long enough to reproduce, to pass on your genes to the next generation.